Hi, Yori Chisholm here. I just wanted to update you on uh, the Tone Protector, my new product that I launched back in August. It's the world's first uh, digital chanter cap with two-way humidity control. Um, so it's been really exciting couple of months. I launched the product in mid-August and it's just been amazing. Uh, we totally sold out in two days and since then we've been ordering supplies building more tone protectors and shipping them around the world as more and more people get on um, get on board the, with this great idea of humidity controlled chanter reed storage and all the benefits that come from that in terms of the overall improved tone uh, the consistency and the stability of your sound from day to day and also that your uh, read sound and look like new for much longer so it's been really exciting um been getting great feedback from players all over the world um here in the united states canada australia in europe and of course in scotland and there's players of all different levels who are using the tone protector now from um beginner players uh pipe band players soloists all the way up to really top world class players competing and performing at the highest level. So it's been exciting to hear back from these pipers and their positive stories about the improvements that they've experienced with uh, the tone protector and their sound. Uh, I had some really great success in Scotland too. Um, in late August, early September, I was over there competing um, the solo circuit. And I did something I've never done before, which is uh, when I arrived in the country, um, in Glasgow Airport, I got my bags and my rental car and I drove straight to a Highland Games. I'd never done that before, um, but within six hours of landing in the country, I was competing. And the conditions were quite different than the, what I'd left uh, here at home. Really cold, rainy, uh, muddy, the field was you know, half flooded. But the pipes were remarkably stable right out of the box. And went really well, I ended up winning some prizes there that day, and it was a really a great day. The next day I competed in another Highland Games, and it was even rainier and colder and more flooding and just really, really um, challenging conditions. But again, the pipes really sounded good and they were consistent from what I'd been um, playing at home in the weeks leading up to, the comp to my trip. So really, really, uh, pleased with that experience and the tone protector worked exactly how I would hoped, meaning I could travel halfway around the world playing totally different conditions with the pipes. Um, sounded great. I'm still playing that reed in my channel, so that reed uh, I've had in for five months now and it still looks and sounds like new. And I think one of the great benefits of the tone protector is that you don't have to do anything to your reed except play it and then put it back, you know, put the, put, put the tone protector back on the channel and keep the reed in there. You don't need to lick the reed, you don't need to pinch it, you don't need to do anything to it, just play it. And that uh, lets the reed stay in that new condition for much, much longer. More and more people are ordering their tone protectors and I'm getting emails every day from pipers from around the world. Retailers are starting to put in their orders. Um, I've been hearing from reed makers too. Some of the top reed makers are very interested in the product and the benefits that pipers can have with their reeds. And this idea of precise humidity controlled reed storage, I think it started to catch on in terms as pipers discover uh, the benefits in terms of the stability, uh, how quickly you can warm up your pipes and, and how when you, the tuning will hold not only in the, over the course of your performance, but also from day to day. So little minute adjustments that you do to the reed and to your taping of your holes, that that um, stays consistent from day to day. And a lot of the chaos and the randomness and the um, challenges that we have with tuning and getting a great channer sound, a lot of those issues that we have completely go away when you do this one simple but really powerful thing, which is store your reed in a environment with a precisely controlled constant humidity level and that's what the tone protector does so um, bands are starting to order i'm getting 
a lot of interest and some um, a lot of orders from bands now in different parts of the world, including the uh, six-time world champion Simon Fraser University Band. And um, really excited. They've ordered a set for their whole band in uh, custom color orange, and they're going to be getting that soon. I gave their pipe major, Alan Bevan, a tone protector um, last summer. He was one of the first to have it, and um, he really likes it. I asked him um, for some feedback, and he said, I love my tone protector. I used it this summer and was pleased with how much more stable my chanter was out of the box than with a traditional reed protector. Particularly after getting off an airplane, I was so impressed we ordered them for the entire pipe core. So that's really exciting, uh, great praise, and coming from someone like Alan, who's not only uh, a pipe major of one of the world's most famous bands, but a top, top soloist, Alan's won both gold medals, all kinds of prizes around the world. So that kind of praise from Alan is great. Also, uh, Willie McCallum has two tone protectors, and he's been really positive about it and telling lots of people uh, wherever he goes, and I'm hearing from players saying that Willie really recommends the tone protector. So I'm excited about that. To have a product that you believe in, that you're getting feedback from people, is uh, it's just really gratifying, and to hear from really, really top players who are very discerning and very particular about their reads and about their sound. Um, that's really fantastic. So couldn't be more excited about that. Um, one of the more common questions that I've been getting from people is about discounts for bands. You know, saying if we've got 20 players or 30 players in our band, can we get a discount? Absolutely. I would love to give you a discount. So just go to toneprotector.com. You can see the site. Shoot me an email. You can reach me through bagpipelessons.com. It all goes to the same place. And uh, shoot me an email, and I'll make you a great deal for your band. Um, another question is about like a wholesale order. If you're a retailer and you want to sell them in your shop, absolutely. We're, we have a growing network of retailers around the world, and we're really excited about that, getting it out into people's online shops and stalls at the Highland Games and in your, you know, if you have a brick-and-mortar shop. Absolutely, we would love to have you on board um, stocking the tone protector. So again, shoot me an email, go to the website. If you want to try one out before you buy a big order for your shop or for your band, great, absolutely. I think the best way is to just go to toneprotector.com, order one or order a couple to try out, and then when you're ready to order your uh, bigger order, shoot me an email, and then I will then apply the discount to the first one that you ordered, so you get the discounted price on that one too once you place your, your big order. So one question that people have been asking is how does it work? And really the key is inside the tone protector, there's um, a holder that holds this packet. And you can see, I just took the top off, and you can see there's the reed on the inside, and then around the side is this holder that holds this, um, it's a two-way humidity control packet. And the way it works is that the packet itself, here, I'll take it out and show you. It's a little kind of crinkled up. But this one, this packet is a it's a semi-permeable membrane that breathes. So moisture can moisture vapor can travel in and out of the packet. Liquid water doesn't travel, but but um, moisture vapor can can travel through this membrane. And each one of these packets is calibrated to a very specific humidity level. So this one is 84%, and that's the one that we recommend. You can get these packets in, in uh, different humidity levels, but 84 is the, what we've discovered is the absolute best for the performance of your read. So inside this packet is water and salt, and I won't get into the details of the chemistry, but the way it works, this particular salt, which is potassium chloride, when it's in an enclosed area, it will always want to maintain 84% humidity. So what that means is that if it's wetter inside that enclosed space, the packet will absorb water to try to keep it at 84. If it's drier in that space, it will release water. So that's perfect for what we're trying to do. Um, we're trying to 
keep that read at a very precise moisture content because everything about the performance of the read is affected by the moisture that's in the read. The pitch, the strength, the loudness, the tuning of individual notes, the quality of the sound, if it's bright or dull, the crowiness of the high end, that sort of thing, the overall stability, the fullness, the richness, everything about how that read operates is going to be affected by the moisture content in that read. So to have the very best performance out of a read and consistent performance, we want to stabilize the moisture content in the read. And the way we do that is by storing the read when you're not playing it in an environment with controlled humidity. So that's what the tone protector does, is it's a channer cap. We place over the channer, keep the read in the channer. You don't have to touch the read. And then it will keep that read when you're not playing it at that constant humidity level. So the way it works, if it's too dry in there, for example, if you put a new read in, it will release water into the read to get it to 84. If you've played and the read gets really wet, when you put the tone protector back on, it will then absorb water again to keep it always at 84%. So one question is how long do these packets last? Well, um, in most climates, it's going to be um, less humid than 84%. And even if you're living in a place where it's quite humid outside, you probably have air conditioning in the, indoors where it's not going to be 84%. So what um, the packet will do is it will release water into the reed, into the tone protector to keep things at 84%. Now, how long the packet lasts depends on how dry it is where you play or where you live and um, how often you play. If you live in a really, really dry place, then the packet will have to work harder and it will get depleted sooner. If you live in the desert or in the Rocky Mountains or something like that. Similarly, if you don't play very often, the packet's gonna be doing all the work to keep that humidity inside the tone protector. If you live in a place that is more humid, the packet won't have to work as hard. Or if you play regularly, that's going to add moisture to your read as well. So theoretically, the packet could last forever if you're playing regularly because you're putting moisture into the read and therefore into the tone protector so it's, uh, or into the packet so it's maintaining an equilibrium. Um, if you just took a packet and just, and just left it out of the wrapper on your table, it would probably dry out in a few weeks. But and you'll know that because it would be hard and crispy. And when you, when you first get it, it's a little bit puffy because you can feel the water in there. Um, but I think in practical terms, how long will it last? I would say months and months to forever. And again, it depends on how much you play and where you live. Um, the packets are very inexpensive. I think I have them for sale on the website for something like a dollar or two dollars. So. Um, they're very inexpensive and they last for months, so it's not a big cost. Um, one question that I've been emailed several times is about mold, and is mold going to be a factor? Now, a lot of pipers, they've been told, well, after you play, you have to dry your reed out, and then you cap it, or you, or you have a cap that has holes in it or something. You want to keep that reed dry so that the reed will last and, and not get mold. Um, the tone protector is designed to keep your reed at the ideal humidity level and a constant humidity level without mold. And the way it does that is two ways. Number one, ventilation. It is not designed to be sealed. Okay, um, It's fairly airtight, but it's not designed to be 100% airtight. There's a little bit of leakage here. There's a little bit of leakage around here. And I... Do, I do not recommend that you seal the bore of the chander in any way. You don't want to use a cork or a stopper in any way. Try to seal this to make it totally sealed. Um, that is going to contribute to mold. The other thing is if you have any kind of tube that you store your chander in when you're not playing, some people have these plastic tubes, like a storage tube, to keep the chander uh, safe. I recommend that you don't seal it. Either keep one end of the cap off, so that you can get some airflow in there, or if you really want to have it, you know, structurally in the tube, drill some holes in the tube so you get good airflow. So that's the number one thing that you want to do to keep reed, your reed from molding. The other thing is that the 
The humidity packet does have an anti-mold ingredient. It's a couple, I think it's half a percent of um, potassium sorbate. And that's a very common food um, preservative. It's If you buy bread or any kind of baked goods from the sh shops, they'll usually have that in there. So totally safe. And just a little bit of that will help keep the mold down in the packet. So another question that I've been asked quite a few times is, what's the ideal humidity level to store my reed? And I've been asked, you know, if I live in this climate or I live in such a, sort of a really wet climate, or really dry climate, is there, do I need to then store my reed at a different humidity level? And the answer is no. So the tone protector is designed to store your reed at the optimal humidity level for the reed. And through my testing and through the feedback I've been hearing from other pipers, 84% is the way you want to go. And that seems to be the ideal humidity level for that reed so that it's sounding right, um, that, you, that you're experiencing all the benefits of the improved performance from the reed in terms of a, a fuller, richer sound and the more stable performance of the reed. It comes from 84%. So it has nothing to do with whether you live in Scotland where it's quite damp or if you live in Arizona or you live in Hawaii, the reed operates perfectly at this 84% humidity level, and that's what I recommend you start with. Each tone protector also gets shipped with a 75% packet, um, just as a backup, in case, anybody, in case you find that, the, you're, for whatever reason, you want to have a slightly drier setup. So far, I've heard from nobody who's used that 75%, so we may phase that out um, once, we, once we hear back from some more pipers on that thing. Um, what if you're a wet blower or a dry blower? Um, again, no difference in how the tone protector works. Store your reed in your channer with the tone protector, take it out to play, and then when you're done, put the tone protector back on your channer. There's no difference if you're a wet blower or a dry blower in terms of how you use it. If you're a wet blower, you may have been taught, oh, I want to dry my reed out. I really want to dry my reed out to get all that moisture out of the reed. Well, the drier your reed is, the more unstable it's going to be while you're playing. If you're a really wet blower and your reed starts out really dry, it's going to go through a dramatic process when you play and of instability and the tuning is going to change and everything about the reed is going to change in that process. So what you want to do is store it in the tone protector at 84% and it will be you'll always be starting at the same point um, every time you play to get the most consistent performance. You don't want to let your reed really dry out. Now, if you're a really dry blower, you get the benefits from keeping your reed at that more elevated humidity level and a constant and a, at a constant level, and you won't have the issue of your reed being so dry that then you need to moisten the reed before you play. So I would recommend that you don't add water to your reed in any way. Don't lick it, don't dip it, don't, any, don't do anything like that. Just let the tone protector do its job. It will keep the reed at a constant humidity level, and then all you have to do is play. And that's been my experience. My tune-up times have been much shorter. My tuning has been much more stable. The reeds are really consistent for week after week by doing nothing to the reed in terms of moisture. Don't lick your reed. Now, I was taught that you always lick your reed right before you play and you pinch your reed right before you play. And that is going to shorten the lifespan of your reed, and that's one of the ways it contributes to, to mold growth on the reed if you're putting your saliva on the reed. So I would not do that. Um, and I think once you get your tone protector and you experience the benefits of this um, constant, precisely controlled humidity level on your reed, you will experience pretty quickly that your reed is ready to go without you doing anything to it. And um, no more licking, no more pinching, that your pipes are just good to go. In fact, I just heard this morning, I had an email from an open piper in Scotland who's actually a member of the world champion um, grade one band from this last year of the world. And he'd taken a bit of a break and he just said he got the pipes out last night for the first time in about a month and the pipes are just amazing. So that's been my experience too. Every time you play your pipes, if you just played them the day before or if you haven't played them for several days or even a couple of weeks or more, 
the pipes feel like you just played them. And that's what this tone protector does is it keeps the moisture content in the reed so you're always ready to go. It feels like you just played them. Um, in terms of, um, I've been asked in, what about different setups in terms of moisture control systems or bags. Again, no difference. We have pipers playing a real natural setup with cane drum reeds and sheepskin. Tone protector works perfectly for them. And also for synthetic bags, it all works. It, it, the tone protector works for all those because it stores your reed at that perfect humidity level for the reed, for the optimal operation for the reed. And think about this, we're all blowing the same amount of moisture when we play, basically 100%. So it's just pure hot steam coming out when we blow it in there. And by elevating the level of the humidity within the reed to 84, and then we're blowing, you know, 100%, that, that difference there is quite minimal, and it's going to be constant from day to day, whether you've been playing your pipes every day or if you've been taking a break. That reed's always going to be at that 84% humidity level. Likewise, no matter where you go in the world, the outside conditions will not affect that reed because it's in this protected environment in here. So that's what's going on with the Tone Protector. Uh, it's been really exciting. Check out ToneProtector.com and there's all kinds of pictures and videos and there's, um, if you didn't see it, I did the, my first video was a sort of a real detailed description about how it works and um, the benefits of, you know, storing your reed at that constant humidity level. Check it out. There it is. Toneprotector.com. Thanks, and uh, shoot me an email if you have any questions.